Walking as his light in this dark world will be the running theme throughout this message. We live in a, in a dark world. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because you know it. I know it. We've experienced it in our lives. What I'm going to do is just use one slide. And I'm going to use a number of words that begin with the letter D. Right in the middle is the word darkness. Now as I read these, see which of those apply or have applied in your life. Or for people that you know and are going through this. Because when it comes time to talk about the comfort dogs, these are the very words that the comfort dogs are <laughs> bringing the compassion and the mercy of Jesus to. People are distressed. There can be dangerous situations in this world that we live in. People do despicable things. People are discouraged. Depression, distraught, and death with grief. Dastardly deeds is the little one there. Dejected, destruction, disgusted, disease, defeated, despair, disappointment, and disillusioned. Experience those in your life? I have. People that you know? Yes. We live in a dark world. And so we need light. And the light is Jesus Christ. Again, Jesus spoke to them saying, and read this with me, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus came into this world as a light. It was a dark evening, probably. A small manger, no electricity. He was born as a baby. Darkness was all around him. And yet this was the light of the world. At, at Timothy Lutheran, where my wife Sue and I are members, on Christmas Eve in the late service, as we're singing, I believe, Silent Night, we each have a little candle. And the ushers come down, and you light the end person, and then we light the candles one by one down there. As we are singing, Silent Night, Holy Night, all is calm, all is bright. The light of the world has come in Jesus Christ. When he grows up, he ends that life on a cross surrounded by darkness. Every one of those words that began with the letter D is swirling around Jesus, is heaped upon him. He is taking it all for us on that cross. And he dies for. He takes our darkness into a tomb. At Timothy, on Good Friday, we have a service, and at the end of it, we sing, Were you there when they crucified my Lord? And we have about seven verses for it. And with each verse, more and more of the lights are turned out in the church. Until finally the song is over and the only light that is left is the Christ candle. And then an acolyte will come and will take that candle and take it out of the church as well. And so we are left in darkness and one of the pastors will take a couple books and slam them together with a loud bang to mark Jesus' death. And it seems as if the light of the world has been snuffed out by all the darkness. But he does not stay in that dark tomb. On Easter morning, he rises. 
And so in that Good Friday service, an acolyte will bring that cross back in and that one little light pushes aside the darkness. On Easter morning, Jesus rises from the dead. The sun rises in the east. The Son of God rises out of the tomb and the light of the world just shatters the darkness. All of those D words have been taken care of by Jesus. He is the light of the world and shines for all eternity. I went to Home Depot, found the biggest light bulb I could get, and I painted it. I painted it the color gold. I'll show this to you. I painted it the color gold because gold is often used for Easter to symbolize the resurrection and the light. But I painted it with a cross. And the cross is called the glory cross because it's a symbol of the resurrection. The cross is empty, the sunlight is on it, and the beams of light come out of it. Jesus is the light of the world in this dark world to bring us hope and joy and comfort and mercy. And so we sing alleluias. He is the light of the world and he does something marvelous. You are a chosen race a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who, what, called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Yes, walk as children of light. Why? Because Jesus has brought us into the light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true. Discern what is pleasing to the Lord and look carefully how you walk. Not as unwise but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil, the days are dark. So we are to walk as his light in this dark world and Emmanuel now... <laughs> brings out a ministry which assists and helps and able to do that called the Comfort Dog Ministry. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show pictures of the dogs that are here. We have, we have 10 dogs, patients, plus 9 other dogs. And uh, I'm going to show some of the things that the dogs do together because Noah Comfort Dog is at Timothy where <laughs> we have him, I have him and my wife and our team members. Noah's going to appear in these pictures. Uh, uh, all right, I'm prejudiced. I like Noah. But anyway, <laughs> four years ago in August, Noah had the passing, back then it was called leash, but now we call it passing of the vest. And uh, so you have uh, nine dogs here. On that day, Noah had Jesse Comfort Dog, who had just begun the ministry six months earlier. The moment I uh, bring for you from Jesse and Noah together, and along with Tabby, is the fall festival in Concordia, Missouri. Ta uh, Jesse is at St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Concordia, Missouri, and the first weekend in September, they have a fall festival and a parade, and so we get invited there, and the dogs get to ride on a float. And what I've noticed... Renee is the top dog. Is, Renee, is that when we are riding that float down your main street, how many people are yelling out, Jesse, Jesse, Jesse? They're not paying any attention to us. They're just paying attention to the dogs. You will be in the community. Patients will be in this community, just as all these dogs are. And you can ask anyone from these teams that are here today. Uh, the other day I was at Menards in the parking lot. Our car has a little Noah comfort dog magnet on the side of it. And somebody was just staring at our car. And I looked at it and she said, I love Noah. I was at St. Mary's Hospital. And he came to visit me. You will be known in the community because of patient's comfort dog, but you don't need a comfort dog to walk as his light in this dark world. Each and every one of us is a part of a community. 
And you can walk as his light in this community, being a part of a community organization, community, contributing to a, to a food bank, helping to keep the community clean, voting, whatever the case may be. But each of us has that call to be his light in this St. Charles community. Jesse Comperdog. Next one is Dinah. Dinah is uh, at uh, oh, Trinity, right? Where's Dinah's team? Yeah, Trinity, right? Yeah, Trinity Lutheran Church in Auburn, Illinois, just south of Springfield. And the moment I remember with, uh, uh, that I bring for us from Noah and Dinah, along with about nine or ten other comfort dogs, is they were at the, after the school shootings in Marshall County, Kentucky. This is a school where students have died. People have been shot by another student. And they bring all the dogs there after these shootings. They're there within usually 24 hours. And when the students come back to school, can you imagine how frightening it would be to come back into a school where you saw a classmate shot or a teacher? And what happened is these dogs as they were placed in the rooms with the students, some with the schedule of the shooter, some where the shootings took place. And your student coming in, and instead of fear, you're greeted with a comfort dog. It made a huge difference. This is from one of the students. Thank you so much for allowing us to have comfort dogs. They are very comforting and it made it a lot easier to be in the school. Petting the dogs make me feel safe being in the school. It's an amazing gift to give to that school. But you don't need a comfort dog to do this. You may not get into a school after a shooting, but youth today are under a great deal of pressure. Peer pressure, bullying, social media tearing them down, temptations all around, pressures to succeed, to do well, to get into a certain college, whatever the case may be. It is a tough time to be a youth. Each of us can walk as Jesus' light in this dark world. For the youth, a simple word of encouragement, a hug, a smile, and a little bit of patience as well. You walk as his light in this dark world for the youth. Next dog is Sheba. Sheba is at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Missouri. Uh, the picture I've got of uh, Sheba and Noah is at the passing of the lease uh, for Sheba. They are playing. They are dogs. You take the vests off and you know what? They play. They are wonderful dogs. The reason I show you this, though, is because all of us need, all of us need to rest and to relax. Sure. Vacation, whatever the case may be, a day off. But, but the rest I'm talking about here is a, a Sabbath rest. A rest, a rest in which you are able to be with Jesus. To have his light fill you up once again. Shine on you to bask in his life. Here at worship, in a devotion at home, with a prayer time. Being with brothers and sisters in Christ. You walk in his light in this dark world because you've been walking in the light of Jesus Christ in the times of rest and devotion. Tabby Comfort Dog is at St. Paul's in De Pere. Tabby and uh, Noah are probably the closest distance wise to each other. Uh, we've done a number of what's called deployments together. Tabby and Noah have gone down to Baton Rouge after a flood. They went down to, after Hurricane Harvey last year as well. And uh, I believe this is when they're driving to Marshall County. And uh, so they spend a lot of time in the van together. 
And uh, I think they're hungry at that moment. <laughs> I'm waiting for food. But the moment I got with Tabby is when they were down in Baton Rouge. And if you look behind the both of them, you see this is all of somebody's belongings on the street. That means their house has been flooded. They have to get everything out before the mold sets in. And so we just walk down the street greeting people. Giving them a few minutes to forget about what's going on. We were at schools there. We were at the shelters for those who have been displaced. We were at 911 call centers. It was just an opportunity to bring the dogs. There was about nine of the dogs there for this deployment in Baton Rouge. But you don't have to have a comfort dog to walk as his light in this dark world when there's a disaster or a tragedy. The call comes out for money or for clothes or for cleaning supplies or for prayers or for a mission trip. Any one of us can walk as his light in this dark world after a tragedy. Next one, I don't have a, an individual picture with Louie and Jackson, with Noah. So I've taken a picture with six dogs. And uh, going from left to right, this one right here is Shiloh. Shiloh heads up the police ministry part of Lutheran Church Charities Comfort Dog Ministry. This is uh, Noah and myself and my son Matthew. Uh, I'll make mention of Matthew a little bit later. Uh, this is Jesse. Uh, and then we have Louie and Jackson. You have to look real cl close. Jackson is the one with the lighter nose. All right? But they are brothers. And then we have Chewy, who's a retired staff dog. This is at the funeral visitation for a police officer who was shot in Clinton, Missouri. He made a routine traffic shot, stop, and was killed. And so this is a major arena in the town, and we have gathered there with the comfort dogs. We are outside paying respect for this fallen officer, along with many other people that were there, police officers from around the country, family, friends, the community, people on motorcycles with flags. And we are there just to pay respect and to bring comfort in a in just a heartbreaking situation. But you do not need to be, have a comfort, hog, a comfort dog to be able to, to walk as his light in this dark world. There are first responders and policemen and policewomen and firefighters and governmental officials and others in authority, pastors and teachers, whoever has authority. And just as we paid respect for this fallen officer, our Lord calls for us in his word to give respect where respect is to do in authorities. You walk as his light when you simply show proper respect. The next dog is Esther. Esther is at Holy Cross in Collinsville, Illinois. And if you look real closely, some people think that Esther and Noah have a thing uh, you can find them holding paws on occasion, uh, having a uh, canoe date. Uh, actually, Sheba and Tabby, we have another picture of Sheba and Tabby in the canoe as well. This is at an event uh, where 60 youth who have lost a family member are at Camp Wyman to process their grief. And uh, so after this, we are all, they're, they're, all the four of the dogs there are there to be with the kids. But the event that I want to call attention to with Esther, and I'm going to show the picture in a second, was when two of our youth drowned at Timothy. Two of our youth drowned, and they had a fundraiser at a Chick-fil-A for the families. And uh, I don't need to say a whole lot because... This picture says a lot. And it's a, one of my favorites. It, it's one that almost makes me tear up every time I see it, Mary. Mary is the top dog for Esther. 
just to be there for someone. Just to share that moment of grief. That's what a comfort dog does. But we can all walk as his light in this dark world in a moment of grief for someone. At a funeral. In a disease, a sickness, an accident. With a word of prayer, with a hug, with a quiet presence. And uh, that brings me to the other dog, Job. This is at Job's passing of the leaves. He's at Christ the King in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, the picture I have of Job at work is a fairly personal one. Uh, I mentioned my, uh, my son, Matthew, in one of the earlier pictures. On June 3rd, 1984, when I was a pastor here, uh, my son Matthew, uh, Sue and I, our son Matthew was baptized over in that church right there. And for that baptism, I did something a little bit different. I called all the kids up for a children's sermon. And so I explained a little bit what baptism is. It's, it's taking a child and bringing that child so Jesus can scoop him up as his own it's, it's Jesus forgiving this child. A child who needs Jesus is now is given to Jesus and becomes a part of his church. And then with that, I had all the kids watching as I simply said, Matthew Allen Nielsen, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And, and Matthew became a child of God. Uh, last September, uh, Matthew had a pulmonary embolism about a month after that picture was taken and, and passed away. Even though it's over a year now, Sue and I still struggle with this. But this is, this is the response of the Comfort Dog family. On Sunday afternoon, we had his visitation and there were 10 dogs and they were, in the, they were in the aisles, in the narthex, and outside. And as Sue and I stood there for the visitation with our family, the, the comfort dog family would come up and greet us and hug us and say how sorry they were. And then for the funeral on Monday morning, these are the dogs that were there. Our family walked in for the funeral and sat on the pulpit side followed by all the comfort dogs and the handlers who sat on the other side of the church across from us. I tell you this story, and there are the dogs. Uh, that's Tabby and Sheba, Mercy from Louisville, Kentucky, and Noah, and Jesse, and Esther, and Job, Louie and Jackson, and then Anna from Toledo, Ohio. I tell you that story because sometimes the comforter needs to be comforted. And in a way, Sue and I have come full circle from that time back in 1984 to come back and share with you what it means to be a part of the comfort dog family. But it wasn't just the comfort dog family that did this. So many people walked as his light during that dark time for us with a prayer, a card, a hug, a word. It would have been very, very difficult for us this year if it had not been for the family of Christ walking alongside of us. You don't need a comfort dog to walk as his light in this dark world. The last picture I have is Patience and Noah. Noah. Patience is being welcomed today into the Comfort Dog family officially. I don't have another picture yet because, well, you got to get started. All right. All of this is just simply to say our Lord calls us to walk as his light in this dark world. And each and every one of us simply does this as a child of the light. But I'll also say this. 
you have a lot more opportunities to do so when you have a comfort dog named Patience. I'd like you to help me finish this sermon. We're going to sing a song, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. Please stand and sing with me.